For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Hello and welcome to the special broadcast. In our continuing coverage on the evolving situation in Afghanistan. We have been uh, talking to different experts, different uh, specialists on Afghanistan uh, who have worked in different segments, not just in the government, but also in the private and the uh, non-government sector. Today, my special guest is uh, someone who has watched Afghanistan, worked in Afghanistan for over 20 years and has intimate knowledge of uh, the situation as well as uh, the uh, building of the Afghan National Army and the subsequent uh, rapid collapse that we witnessed uh, over the past one week or so. Uh, let me welcome Lieutenant General R.K. Sahani, former Director General Military Intelligence, uh, who uh, was uh, one of the first uh, officers of the Indian Army or Indian government to initiate contact with the Northern Alliance in fact, he propelled the Northern Alliance in, uh, in, uh, in the uh, previous century, in the early this century, and uh, has kept in touch with uh, the developments in Afghanistan for a long time. Welcome to this program, General Sahani. Thank you so much, Nitin. Pleasure Sir, to be in <laughs> Thank you for joining. Um, you know, we have spoken over the past three, four years, uh, three, four days uh, on uh, various issues about the political situation, about the uh, international commitment or non-commitment, the U.S. withdrawal uh, from Afghanistan and the subsequent rapid takeover of uh, various provinces and, of course, uh, the um, takeover of the capital of Afghanistan, Kabul, by the uh, rampaging Taliban forces. One of the surprising elements to many people has been the uh, unexplained, I would say, collapse of the Afghan National Army or the Afghan Defense Forces. Uh, since you have been associated very closely uh, in uh, raising and then training and sustaining uh, some of these uh, forces and uh, interacting with them so closely, uh, what is your first reaction to this uh, entire development? Why did this happen? You see, it was in the beginning quite a bit of a shock. But then I went into the details of it. It's, there is a requirement to look at the genesis as to how this army was formed. You see, this army was formed out of the remnants of the Northern Alliance troops, which were formed by uh, Commander Masood. You know, people always forget that the force which, uh, uh, which uh, regained control on Afghanistan was actually the Northern Alliance. Basically, right. all the troops on the ground were provided by the Northern Alliance. And the Americans only gave the air support. So after the, uh, you know, the con I would say the re-establishment of the order and pushing out of the Taliban, which was not done to the extent it should have been done, the question came about raising an army for the newly uh, liberated nation. So that is where the problem started. Actually, from the Bonn Agreement onwards, I still recollect a blueprint was made and we were involved in it. And we gave them a blueprint. We gave them the organization. And in that organization, we told them, told the Americans, that if an army has to be raised, it should be a proper army. By that, I mean the various components of the army. The, the infantry, of course, the armored corps, the artillery, the signals, and the logistic corps, etc. This unfortunately was deferred, and there were lots of doing and throwing. And now I realize that there was the hand of the Pakistan in that, because they were the people who were from the back on the uh, what do you call backstage, pulling the strings. So they managed to convince the Americans that the army which is going to be, which was going to be raised, should be a counter-terror outfit or a counter-insurgency outfit. So what ultimately started being raised also much later in a smaller strength 
was actually a paramilitary, if you ask me. Paramilitary, which had infantry, which had small arms, and which was basically and essentially trained to control terrorism or infantry. That's how it right. started. Yes, but so that means this army or this paramilitary was not trained to uh, do any defensive operations or hold territory. Is that what you're saying? Is that uh, how the regular armies are normally trained to do both offensive operations as well as defensive operations? They were only interested in going after the Taliban uh, with uh, support of the Americans. Is that what happened, sir? Absolutely. Absolutely. You see, because I talked to one of their generals. I think it was the year of I think ten or eleven. I don't I don't remember no. And I was uh, I met him over a cup of tea, and he very patiently explained to me, which I was not at <laughs> all convinced. He told me that you know basically these troops have only got one threat that is the insurgents and terrorists. So I mentioned to him that you see this troop also these troops also are the army of a nation. Which is supposed to guard the territory of that nation. So he told me, why should they worry? Because he explained to me, and which I was quite irritated. He said, General, we have air power. So <laughs> you know, he said, as if I didn't know that they have air power. Anyway, <laughs> he said, even if a section of their seven, eight people, they go for a patrol. And they meet opposition. Our air force will be over the horizon and to reach there in the next two, what do you call it, next 10, 15 minutes at the most, half an hour, and beat the hell out of the enemy which is there. So I told him, I said, this is not how a Oriental or a uh, what do you call Asian countries train their armies. But you see, basically the air support which comes in would not only destroy two or three of those, uh, uh, what do you call, enemy troops or the insurgents, they'll also do damage to the civilian population around. But that was dismissed by him as a collateral damage. What, <laughs> I want, uh, why, what I want to bring out to you is that they were creating an army which was actually not an army. And this continued. Right. In fact, uh, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. No, no, that, that, that's all. That's all I wanted. So, General uh, Sani, essentially, uh, what you are saying is that the entire American plan uh, of pouring in money, training them, sustaining them throughout these twenty years uh, came to a knot because uh, they didn't train them or raise them as a regular army. But moving on, I want to ask another question now. Uh, there is a feeling that uh, when the uh, provinces were uh, fighting or uh, fighting was happening in the provinces over the past uh, month or so, uh, the uh, warlords there or the uh, formation commanders also cut a deal with Taliban uh, for various reasons. One may be personal reasons, second could be lack of motivation or lack of clarity or objective. Is that something that uh, you have analyzed or you have thought about? You see, basically, first of all, to be fair to the Americans, some of them never understood uh, of, of Afghans at all. They didn't understand as to how the Afghan army acted with mentors. I mean, you erroneously call them warlords. But these were the leaders of the various areas. So these chaps' role was very important, which was ignored. And the second point was, although they tried to have all, what do you call, ethnic uh, uh, affiliations, there were uh, Azaras, Pashtuns, Uzbeks, and Tajiks, but the officer lot was mainly Tajik. Another point which was, uh, uh, what do you call, uh, lacking was, we sent the leadership actually at a higher level. That was, you know, should have been trained much better. And there was no sense of purpose in the, in the way. In the beginning, it was there, but it started decreasing. Now the money was poured in. I mean, you would be amazed to know that they spent almost $88.3 billion on this force. 
in last 10 years. But unfortunately, there was no check. In the beginning, they started checking them. But as the years passed and things became hot, the checking stopped. The army started functioning quite well in the beginning. But as the years passed, as the days passed, the temptations grew, the corruption increased, and the leadership quality uh, started going down. There was, you see, the, at the higher leaderships, the people who came in didn't deserve to come in. So all these problems ultimately started a rot, which was completely hidden. And unfortunately, even I don't think the Americans also knew as to how big the rot had set in. Just to give you an example, they created a very fine outfit, which was the special forces. About, I think about seven to 10,000 troops who were very well trained, but trained as commandos. So their job, job was that if the area was lost, they recaptured it. Right. So this is ridiculous. <laughs> You see, there is a core, there is core, there is, there is formations. So those formations were never trained as, uh, you know, the normal armies should take uh, to be trained. They were not even trained to recapture an area because that was outsourced to the commandos. Oh, so that is I mean, just imagine because same army, you know, and and to say that the Afghans were not attuned to doing it. They were not uh, technically savvy, etc. It's ridiculous because I have seen Masood with a very small, dedicated band of people with him. And I think hardly about 30 to 40 tanks. He did a magnificent job and, of course, was overwhelmed by the Pakistanis because sure. they sent the Taliban led by the what you call Pakistani. But ultimately, they fought. They fought till the end. Right. So this is a problem. The spirit started getting lacked, and the the enthusiasm waned. Corruption crept in, and would you believe that at a certain stage, that is about a year from now or eight months or a year ago, the defense minister was disappeared somewhere. He was not well. He was sick, so there was no defense minister. The army chiefs were again very sort of a change frequently at the frequently. Base that's right. Because we then fancy the fancies of Ghani. You know, that again is something which uh, would have should have raised some sort of a alarm somewhere, but they were all hidden. And I am very surprised now why the Americans didn't raise any sort of a objections to that. Because they were footing the bill. I don't exactly. know why. Exactly. No, but also <clears throat> there was this uh, report I was reading somewhere and maybe uh, some of the other people have been talking about it. Uh, is also the fact that uh, since February this year, when uh, the deal between the Americans and the Taliban leadership was announced, uh, or the date of withdrawal of the American forces was announced, uh, the will to fight the Taliban uh, started waning in the uh, the army. And secondly, uh, the directive from the top leadership, including President Ghani, mainly, was that uh, you don't resist, there should be no bloodshed, uh, we should allow them to come in because there is going to be a uh, inclusive government or a power sharing agreement that is going to happen. Uh, and as you know, sir, you've served the army for 40 years without a flag, without an objective and without uh, motivation for the country. Um, any other force, any other military force, militia force uh, is not an army. Then it is just a band of uh, gorillas or band of, uh, I would say, gun wielding uh, group of people. Uh, would that have also contributed to what happened finally? Precisely. You see, when you tell an army, or you tell the governors of the of the what do you call provinces that you go slow on fighting, and because there is a deal on the way, so what message do you give? You give a message to the people down below that the fighting is not required, fighting is not necessary. And that is where the will goes away. You see, when the will goes away, when the commanders at the what do you call lower level, at the fighting level, realize that they are fighting for a, a futile cause, 
when the leadership itself is not interested in uh, what do you call uh, the resistance so the deals come in that is right. what unfortunately happened masood never did that you see i'll also take you further back najibullah time they fought for 3 years exactly you see i tell you the spirit completely went away yeah goes away when you tell the troops that you can do things other than what you call fighting to uh, board off the enemy so the net result was a horrible result attacking forces they talk about the taliban will talk about conquest i'll tell you how the attacking forces came taliban came on cycles on motorcycles waving their what do you call flags on the open trucks and there was no resistance except at the few places in the beginning where they lost some people right and the commanders on the ground you know you what type of a military engagement is this when the uh, both sides commanders sit on a sofa set and work out a deal <laughs> so this disgraceful spectacle started happening from one what you call province to another on top of that americans you know shamefully abandoned the what you call uh, the areas the base and at the at night and then they had the audacity to give a assessment that uh afghan forces will fall within 90 days exactly <laughs> so you see the armed forces <laughs> the army the fighting requires will fighting requires leadership you tell your man who is manning a certain position that you will fight to the last round and the last man you see the word withdrawal any army which uses a retreat that becomes a rout and that is what happened in this case that's exactly I what has happened very, i yes. feel very sorry for this these uh, for this army because this army could have been used very very effectively unfortunately not only was it let down it was absolutely abandoned by the leadership and by the mentors and then somehow the rout became you know into a a tsunami can you believe it that i thought at the last time i mean the last stand will be taken in kabul, kabul. Hmm. but do you know that in kabul when they came in there was not one single barrier the only shooting which was done it was done in the air as a celebratory fire that's so right so this is how the gallant what do you call taliban rode themselves to victory absolutely so no, yes yes go ahead sir go ahead so you see this is where if they say that they vanquished the what do you call uh, the ana i would not uh, accept that you, sort of you won't accept that yes no no i agree fully in fact um, as as someone said that an army fights for the flag uh, like in indian army it is known as naam namak nishan you fight for uh, the uh, paltan or the battalion or the regiment that you work for then uh, the flag and of course the nation's flag so that i think uh, just went out of the uh, afghan army's uh, planning or afghan army's uh, uh, mindset and therefore the rout that we have seen but going forward sir uh, what do you think uh, is going to be the future of these say uh, 300000 3 lakh soldiers who were there mainly tajiks and uzbeks and hazaras uh one uh, of course that the uh, any government coming in may not uh, be able to pay them secondly uh, they may not be trusted by the uh, taliban uh, so what happens uh, to uh, these uh, soldiers who were trained in various places some officers were trained in india most officers were trained in india if i am not mistaken so what happens to this what what will be your prognosis they will become a problem You see what happens is that this army was actually a very big army. Americans were putting in almost four billion dollars a year. That money is never going to come. And these people who have been trained as soldiers, and they all are armed and armed with the modern what do you call weapons? The larger, bigger weapons have been left behind, and that of course the details are there. But the small arms, I am definite, have been carried away. 
ammunition has been carried away so just imagine in a small country not small country in a medium sized country 300000 people who are disaffected who feel let down by their commanders and their nation and they are now out of uniform without job without pay because paying them will not be possible for the taliban in any case they won't trust them so 300000 people who have been trained who have been sort of trained in in a fashion who have know how to use their arms they will become a big liability as per the nation is concerned so i don't know what type of a mayhem they can cause to get them back and to sort of make sure that they get useful occupation i think it is going to be beyond the capacity and the willingness of taliban so this is going to be a problem for the nation as well as for the region as far as the region is concerned absolutely but uh, one final question jal sani to you uh, you know in 2001 when uh, amir shah masood Uh, started his uh, fight back uh, from panchir valley uh, one of his closest aides was amrullah saleh who was the first vice president of the um, deposed government or the government that collapsed recently and now he is reportedly uh, based again in panchir valley and is now proclaimed himself to be an acting president uh, do you see uh, i mean it's difficult to uh, sort of do crystal ball gazing but do you see another resistance front rising from there again or uh, it's going to be uh, still early days to even come to any kind of a prognosis still early days but i want to tell you one thing one day we were talking to each other i know amrullah and amrullah told me he says you know general how masood died i said yes i know <laughs> he says he was assassinated by the assassin sent by pakistan in a closed room so he told me see if i have to die i'll die fighting and i will not like to be assassinated right i'm just telling you what he told me yes and i don't know what is going to happen because you see the path is going to be very difficult this area is supplies are going to be difficult giving aid to him is going to be difficult but then i want to tell you one thing that amrullah is a person if he makes up his mind some people might call it cool ordering some people might call it junoon as they call him urdu so i don't know but i want to tell you that the man is a spirited person rest now to premature but knowing him i think he'll put up a good fight he put right. up a good fight like afghans should have put which they have been putting except for the last episode So yes. I don't know. I won't be able to give us a. <laughs> But must be a final um, uh, sort of comment from me that must be quite painful for somebody like you who has uh, worked so hard with along with so many different people uh, to raise and sort of uh, you know have a new uh, force uh, and uh, see Afghanistan from that old trajectory of uh, driving out Taliban to bringing in uh, the resistance force first in Kabul and now. again seeing kabul in the hands of taliban must be quite um, disconcerting or uh, even painful if i am not mistaken it will be it is painful because my sympathy is like that of all indians it goes for the afghan people especially the young people who in 20 last 20 years have gained so much the men women the young people young women we do hope that uh, they continue to thrive they are not suppressed they are not what do you call uh, made to do things they don't want to do their development ambitions their career ambitions are not thwarted and whatever india has invested in the development dams schools hospital i hope they are not ruined i hope they are not vandalized like last time because as i told you all of us have empathy sympathies ultimately for the people and we wish them very well and i think india would continue to uh, uh, keep thinking about their welfare in whatever way we can that's right thank you very much uh, general i completely agree with you let's be a little optimistic uh, let's hope for the best uh, but uh, we will see how it unfolds uh, in the coming weeks and months 
but uh, until we uh, do another program with you thank you very much for your time uh, it's been always very insightful and uh, you've always given us uh, new information and new insights into what goes into afghanistan and what makes the people of afghanistan so resilient and uh, so uh, gutsy uh, in many ways uh, that we have seen over the years thank you very much for your time niral sahani thank you so much nitin thanks a lot pleasure so viewers uh, do keep uh, watching uh, our program uh, do keep subscribing to our youtube channel and you know where to reach us for your feedback and comments and of course uh, the details of social media handles uh, are right here on the screen uh, so do uh, follow us on uh, various uh, social media accounts on instagram on facebook on twitter uh, and uh, of course let us know what else we can do and which other programs uh, you would like to see on our channel until the next time it's goodbye